Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I am so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel, I post a ton of anti-MLM content. I have deep dives, I have MLM top fails, I have MLM horror stories. If any of that kind of content sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video, and I will also link my anti-MLM playlist right up here. At this point, there's over 50 videos in that playlist for your viewing pleasure. Today's video, however, is a little bit different than what I'm used to doing, and we're gonna cover a ton of the topics that come up time and time again all across my my channel, but this video is important because I wanted to compile them all in one place, give it a permanent spot on my channel, and just wrap everything up with a nice, neat bow. The industry of multi-level marketing is one of the most manipulative and deceptive things that you can get involved in, and the purpose of this video is to break down 10 of the most common bait and switch tactics that MLM reps will use to lure you in and keep you in a business opportunity that is designed for you to fail. Some important terminology before we get too far into this video, of course, is that we are talking about multi-level marketing marketing companies. These are companies in which representatives can buy into the business opportunity and by paying that startup cost, you join the company, you sell that company's products and you recruit other people to come in and sell that company's products as well. The common terminology here is join my team, join my business, come join the opportunity, be in my downline. In MLMs, representatives make a small commission off of product sales to customers, but the real money in these companies comes from recruiting people into your downline because you also make money off of those people's sales. So the bottom line is that it is essential that you build a large team if you want to make any money in these MLMs. The second important term for this video obviously is bait and switch. In the context of MLMs, we're talking about what a representative will say to you as a potential recruit to bait you into the business opportunity and then how that narrative gets switched on you once you've joined and what that representative will say to you to keep you in that business opportunity for longer. The third and final piece of background information for this video is that you need to know that less than 1% of people in these MLMs make any money. This is because if you account for your startup costs, for your membership fees, the price of any products that that representative has bought for themselves, 99.6% of the time, those expenses are far more than that person will ever make back out of this business opportunity. Meaning that the overwhelming majority of people in these companies are actually running a deficit and actively losing money by being a part of their MLM. And this aspect of MLMs is very important to know because it is really difficult to convince people to join join these business opportunities in the first place. And it's even more difficult to keep them in the company once they've joined and they realize that all they're doing is losing money. But ensuring that the people in your downline stay on your downline is vital to the entire business model working because after all, having a large team and making money off of the people below you is the most lucrative way that these companies operate. So knowing that as we go down this list of manipulation tactics, I'm gonna present them to you as a before you join and after you join kind of context to show you how the reps in this industry will say and do whatever is necessary to suck you in and to keep you there for as long as possible against your better judgment. So let's just jump right into this, let's go. The number one manipulation tactic I see in these companies is before you join, they tell you this business is so easy, it fits into the pockets of time throughout your day. And then after you join and after you realize how difficult it is, the narrative turns into nobody said that this would be easy. It takes a lot of time and effort and hard work if you wanna make any money. This is the most common bait and switch tactic that I see. As a rep who's trying to recruit you, they're obviously trying to paint this business opportunity in the best light possible. They want you to believe that it's simple, that anyone can do it, that this can fit into your life no matter how busy you are, because you have the freedom to choose when and where and how much you work. So great, you join under the impression that you know you can squeeze this in 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, and you truly believe that you can be successful doing that and you can make good money, fitting it into your life life where and when you can because that's what you were told before you joined. However, you realize very quickly that making money in these business models is not easy. And that truth be told, you can't really make much money if you're just treating it like a hobby and you're just dedicating 30 minutes a day or whatever to it. Once you're in and you start talking to your upline and you're like, hey, I'm really not being as successful as I thought I was gonna be, their response to you is gonna be that the business works if you do. And that if you're not seeing success, it's because you are not working hard enough. And you need to be treating this like a full-time job if you want to see a full-time income, which as we know is a complete fallacy because less than 1% of people make any money in these businesses. And that's just a fact regardless of 
how hard you work. Hard work and effort have absolutely nothing to do with if you make money in an MLM or not. It has much more to do with your timing when you got into that MLM and how new that MLM was at the time. It has a lot to do with luck and it has a lot to do with your ability to recruit people and if those people that you're picking out to join your team actually say yes or not. The second bait and switch tactic that I see all the time is that before you join, you're told that you have an uncapped earning potential. There is no limit to how much money you can make and that you are in control of what you earn. But on the flip side, once you join, you realize that you have to rely on other people on your team performing well in order for you to make good money. There are only two income producing activities in an MLM. The first thing you can do to make money is you can sell a product to a customer and you can earn a small commission. The second thing is when you recruit somebody to be in your downline and you earn recruitment bonuses and commissions off of their sales as well. The harsh reality is that if you can't find a customer to buy your product, if you can't find someone to recruit, or if your current team members aren't performing well, your finances suffer as a result. I would argue that in an MLM, you're actually very much not in control of how much money you make because you're heavily reliant upon other people and how well their sales are going and your paycheck is very unstable and it fluctuates month to month. Hence the reason why it is so important that you continually recruit new people onto your team. You're constantly replenishing the people that quit and you're doing everything in your power to make sure people don't quit, which honestly is kind of the entire premise of this video. It's what they'll say to get you to join and then how they'll switch it on you to make sure that you don't leave. The third bait and switch tactic that I see is that before you join, you're told that this is a great way to supplement your income it can help cover a few bills here and there. But then after you join and after you realize that you're not making any money, you're told that earning nothing for months or years at a time is just part of owning a business. You shouldn't expect to make money right away. It takes time to see a return on your investment. When you're being pitched the opportunity, you're led to believe that this has the ability to cover whatever financial goals you may have. I've seen people pitch it like, join this business and cover your cell phone bill, cover your grocery bill. Other people choose to pitch it like, like join this opportunity and quit your full-time job, make this your full-time thing. And then people will go even farther and they'll say, join this business and you can be a millionaire. But as is typical for most people that join an MLM, they spend a couple hundred dollars or whatever it may be to join the business. And it takes them much longer than expected to actually recoup that investment and start making a profit. And usually if they do make a profit, that profit is very, very minimal. It's not enough to cover your bills. It's not enough to make you quit your full-time job. It's certainly not enough to make you a millionaire. So when people start questioning, hey, I thought that this was gonna be a nice, convenient, easy way for me to make a little bit of extra money, they're met with, well, I don't know why you thought that because this is a business and business owners have to work a really long time without making any money. That's just the way it goes. You need to work harder and wait longer, which might make sense if this was legitimately someone's business. Let's say I open a boutique store. That would require me a lot of startup fees and a lot of time to get up and off the ground because I'm starting from ground zero. I need to find a location. I need to source a product or create a product. I need to figure out my pricing plan. I need to market myself. I need to build a loyal clientele. All of these things reasonably take a lot of time and money to grow. However, when you join an MLM, you're not starting your own business. You're paying a startup fee to join an already established company that takes care of the products, the manufacturing, the pricing, the shipping, the branding, all for you. Nothing about that warrants having to wait months or years years for you to see a return on your investment. Theoretically, if the products and the business opportunity were as wonderful as the reps say they are, people should have no problem turning a profit really quickly. But instead, what it really is, is a sketchy business model with subpar overpriced products, which makes it very difficult to pitch and sell people, therefore making it difficult to make a profit. And here's kind of a bonus paradox that isn't included in my list. And that's how these reps will claim that they are starting their own small business, yet some simultaneously claim that they are partnering with a billion dollar company. It's very confusing. And it just goes to show you that the narrative can switch on a dime depending on whatever the point is that they're trying to make in that moment. Number four kind of goes off the last point, but before you join, they'll say, this is your own business. You are your own boss. You're the CEO. But after you join, you realize you're just placed on a team. You're expected to attend regular team meetings. You have an upline to report to, and you have a company's policies and procedures to abide by. If there is one thing that I want to be perfectly clear about in this video is that MLM reps are not their own bosses. They're not the CEO of anything and they don't own a business. 
If you're truly your own boss, then why are you placed on a team? Why is there a string of people in your upline making money off of you if you're supposed to be the business owner? And most importantly, when you sign up for an MLM, you must comply with that company's policies and procedures. These are documents that every MLM company has that outline what you can and cannot do as a representative of their company. Let's take the Monate policies and procedures, for example. It outlines things like reps cannot make income claims, they cannot make product claims, they can't sell or promote non-Monate products, they can't create independent websites with any of Monate's marketing or branding, they can't sell Monate products through other platforms like eBay or Amazon, they can't have more than one Monate business per household. I mean, the list goes on and on. There's an unbelievable amount of rules that you must abide by or else you risk being terminated by the company. And that alone should tell you something. If you can be terminated, it's not your business and you're not the CEO of anything. Number five is that before you join, you're told that there are no monthly fees, no quotas, and that you can decide how much or how little you spend. And then after you join, you realize that there's monthly personal volume requirements that you have to hit and you have to be a product of the product. And so you have to purchase all these things to try for yourself if you're gonna sell them. You're also expected to be the first person in line to buy the new products every time your company launches something. And this one is extra manipulative and extra misleading because it's all in the wording. MLM reps will tell you that there's no purchase requirements, there's no fees, there's no quotas, which could technically be true based on the wording, but that's because those things are hiding somewhere else within the compensation plan. Let's look at Young Living, for example. The reps will tell you that there's no monthly fee, which is 100% true. Young Living does not require you to pay them $100 every month just to stay active. However, their compensation plan does outline that past a certain rank, you have a 100 point PV requirement every month. Okay, so what is PV? It stands for personal volume. And according to Young Living, the only way to earn these PV points is by purchasing product for yourself. You cannot hit these requirements by selling products to customers. So true, there's not an outright $100 fee that you're paying to Young Living every month just to remain active and earn your commissions, but you do have to spend at least $100 on product every month if you want to remain active and earn your commissions. Additionally, it is the expectation that you use the products that you're selling. And for a lot of these MLMs that have consumable products, meaning that you use it all up and you have to replenish it, MLM reps get caught in this cycle where they use a variety of that company's products and they are constantly purchasing more, becoming very regular customers of those products. If we're continuing with this Young Living example, that means that these reps have diffusers, oils, roller balls, supplements, skincare even. And before people know it, they're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars every so often on all these products that they now deem to be like their daily essentials. And another thing like I briefly mentioned before is that these companies constantly release new products. And as soon as that product comes out, it's the expectation that you purchase it because now you're gonna be selling it and promoting it. And that is what is so sneaky about all of these companies is that before you join, it's very easy to be told no quotas, no requirements, spend as much as you want. But then you realize once you're in that there's all kinds of loopholes that require you to spend way more money than you're ever making back. And the sixth bait and switch tactic is that before you join, you're told that you don't need a lot of friends, you don't need a large following. And then after you join, you realize, well, all the good money is made from recruiting, so who am I supposed to recruit? One of the big hangups that people have about joining an MLM is they're like, well, I don't have a lot of followers. I don't have a lot of people to pitch to. And the person trying to recruit them will often overcome that objection by just saying, well, you don't need a lot of followers. You don't have to be an influencer. Anyone can do this. A huge selling point for MLMs is that they make people believe that they are influencers, they are affiliate marketing, they are partnering with a brand, even though that's not what's happening at all. MLMs these days are actually pretty clever because they're playing into that millennial desire to be an influencer and to make money from social media. And that's kind of how they pitch the opportunity. It's almost like come and join this business opportunity and be an influencer without any of the requirements or without the influencer sized following. However, once you join and you get to know the compensation plan, you start to realize that all the money is made through recruitment and that's where you need to focus your time and energy. But wait, I was told I didn't need a large following, but that's how you make money. So what am I supposed to do now? And this is exactly how cold messaging is born. Cold messaging is an adaptation of the term cold calling. And in the context of MLMs, this is when an MLM rep will reach out to strangers through social media, also known as the hey hun message, and they'll pitch the products and they'll pitch the 
opportunity in an attempt to grow their network. So the bait is like, you don't need a large following to do this. And then the switch is like, wait, you kind of do. So now it's going to be your responsibility to spend all this time creating this network for yourself in a scramble if you actually want to make any money. Number seven is that before you join, you're told that you can get a free car, a company car, a paid for car. And then after you join, you realize that it's just your car and the company may or may not give you a conditional bonus check. This is one of the bait and switches that make makes me personally the most infuriated because MLM reps will openly and confidently lie that their car is paid for by their company. These car program contracts are the most egregious things I have ever seen. And I personally think they're one of the worst financial decisions that you can make. Let's take Plexus, for example. Theirs is called the Plexus Lexus program. The first requirement is that you reach the 0.25% of the company. Yes, the top less than 1%. The second requirement is that you take your yourself to the Lexus dealership, you purchase a car, but it has to be a Plexus approved model. It has to be a Plexus approved color, and it must be in the current year model, meaning that it must be the newest and most expensive version on the market. The next step is that you send Plexus a proof of purchase of your car, and then they start giving you a bonus check every month if you continue to maintain or exceed your current rank. If you do not continually keep your rank, then your payments are cut off, and that monthly payment for that luxury car falls on you because it's your car. And then to make matters even worse, the gas, the insurance, the maintenance, all of that falls on you as well. And the amount that the company gives you usually doesn't even cover the cost of your monthly payment. Of course, I'm using Plexus as the example here, but a lot of these car programs are exactly the same structure. The Monet Cadillac is the same. The Arbon Mercedes is the same. And I have deep dive videos into each of these companies separately where I really get into the details of these programs. And I'm happy to link those below if you're interested in that. Please do not be fooled into thinking that these companies give you a free car. It is a bold faced lie. What really happens is that they convince you to take out a loan on a luxury car that you can't afford so that you are indebted to to this company and you're forced to stay longer than you probably would because you need them to help you pay for it. Number eight is that before you join, you're told that this business opportunity will give you time freedom and much more time to spend with your family. And after you join, you figure out that you're on your phone constantly. You're expected to work anytime, any place, and you're told that you need to make sacrifices if you want your business to be successful. Another huge selling point that MLM reps will use is that this business gives you time freedom. You're working for yourself, you're your own boss, you get to decide. But I'm here to say that when you join an MLM, because you can work from anywhere, you will be expected to work from anywhere. I have shown and reacted to countless clips of MLM reps on my channel, working on vacation, working from the hospital, right after their pet died, as they are on the toilet, miscarrying. And I wish I was joking about that one, but this isn't a joke, this is real. There will be pressure put on you constantly to work your business and no excuse is valid enough to take a break. This isn't even just internal pressure that you're putting on yourself either. This is pressure from your upline. In other words, there's people above you that depend on you for their paycheck. And the expectation is that nothing comes between them and their paycheck. Oh, I mean you and your business. And if you do have a personal family issue, a tragedy or anything else that a normal person would get paid time off for, you are going to be expected to take that situation and flip it around into a pitch about how thankful you are for this business and this opportunity and how it allows you to work through these difficult times. The ninth bait and switch is that before you join, you're under the impression that you will have a wonderful, loving, supportive community of people and new best friends. And then after you join, you realize that these relationships are all conditional. They're only based on your performance and if you decide to stay in the company or not. Some people might feel tempted to join an MLM because it very much is marketed as like a group of like-minded people and a supportive community of women. Loneliness and longing for a sense of community are huge pain points that MLM reps prey on when they're recruiting new people. The moment that you join an MLM, you might experience what is known as love bombing. This is when you are overwhelmed with attention and praise and encouragement coming from your new teammates when you join the MLM. The purpose is to give you the impression that you're loved and supported with a whole bunch of like, woo woo, you can do this BS so that you feel positive emotions towards this new group of people. And therefore you let your guard down for the manipulation tactics that lie ahead. And once you've been in the MLM for a while, you might start to realize that these relationships are conditional because how could they not be? Everyone has something to gain from everyone else. These aren't genuine friendships built on mutual love and trust. You were thrown into a group of people that 
that are all making money off of each other. And of course they wanna see you succeed because their income depends on it. And this is why so many people report feeling rejected or shunned from their MLM friends once they leave because those were never true friendships to begin with. And knowing this, it's easy to understand why it's so hard for people to leave their MLM because the longer they're in, the more indoctrinated they are to believe that this group of people has their best interests at heart. Meanwhile, they're cutting off outside relationships from real friends and family because those people might not support their decision to be in the MLM. It truly is like a toxic relationship and it has the ability to keep people in that MLM for longer than they would like to be because they're afraid of what's gonna happen to them when they leave. And the 10th and final bait and switch tactic for this video is that before you join, you're told that these products are the best on the market and they practically sell themselves. And then after you join, you realize that the way you really make sales is by cold messaging strangers, asking them if they wanna buy your product. You're also scrambling at the end of every month trying to hit quotas and you're made aware of unethical rank buying. I think that one of the biggest shocks for people who just joined an MLM is how hard it really is to sell this stuff. You have multiple hurdles you need to overcome. First of all, MLM companies have a pretty bad reputation. Then you need to convince somebody that they need whatever gimmicky product it is that you're selling. Then you have to convince them that it's worth the insane markup price. You might have to convince them to sign up for like your VIP auto ship program. Rarely is it as easy as posting a photo of the product and having people rushing to your DMs to purchase it. And let's be clear that the only people saying that these products are incredible are the people in the MLM who are trying to sell it. So when you're on the outside, you're kind of under the impression that like, wow, she's talking about this product so much, it must be amazing. And she's always raving about how great they are and how everybody wants them and they're the best on the market. But then when you join, it's crickets. And all of a sudden you realize, oh, people really don't wanna buy this stuff, huh? I'm gonna need to start cold messaging people. And I wanted to save this bait and switch tactic for last because it really highlights the dark and ugly truth that hitting your goals in an MLM is often a last minute scramble. There's kind of this end of month culture in MLMs that's really strange. And as we talked about before, there's sales requirements, there's purchase requirements, there is recruitment requirements that are all necessary if you want to hit new ranks or maintain your rank. And these requirements reset at the beginning of every single month. So at the end of the month, people are freaking out and desperately doing whatever they have to do to hit these quotas and not drop in rank. And what this has the potential to turn into is teams coordinating together and quite literally being like, you need to buy this much product right now, you need to buy that much product right now because you will rank her up, which will then rank her up, which will then rank me up. And yes, this is against the policies and procedures of these companies, but it's not monitored. Nobody's regulating this. And I know with 100% certainty that this happens. I have personally seen screenshots of a big team in Monate rank buying and the leaders telling people what to buy so that they can rank up. If I can find these screenshots, I will post them here. But I know for a fact that this happens in other MLM companies too. My main message with this is that the representatives of these MLM companies are the primary customers of the products. This money all moves internally within the company. And what this results in is a very small percentage of people at the top of the company making all of the money while the majority of people at the bottom lose. And that is all the bait and switch tactics that I have for this list, but I know there are more. This is simply a list of the top 10 ways that I personally see people being manipulated the most in MLMs. But if you can think of others, please leave them in the comments comments down below because I know that I missed some. My hope for this video is that it was informative and that if you are here doing your own research and educating yourself on this business model, maybe because it's been pitched to you, I hope, hope, hope that I've done everything I can to convince you that this is not a good idea to be getting involved in because please remember that you are worthy of everything that these MLM companies claim that they will give you, but they very rarely follow through on those promises and all it does is create a huge mess for you down the road. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.